Who was Albert Einstein? For an idea that does not at first seem insane, there is no hope. Albert Einstein. Did you know that Albert Einstein was a very poor student who got kicked out of school? Well, he was. Yet, he was one of the most brilliant people that the world has ever known. Did you know that Albert was a peace loving person who hated war? Well, he was. Yet his work led to the creation of the most destructive bomb ever. Did you know that Albert was shy and hated publicity and attention? Yet he was a media superstar. Even now, 50 years after his death, Hollywood still makes movies about him, and t shirts, coffee mugs, and posters are decorated with pictures of his famous face. Who was Albert Einstein? You are about to find out. Chapter 1 Born to Think There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, the other is as though everything is a miracle. Albert Einstein Albert Einstein made his entrance into the world on March 14, 1879, in Ulm, Germany. He certainly didn't seem like an extraordinary child. He was chubby and pale, with thick black hair. He was so quiet and shy that his parents worried that there was something wrong with him. They took Albert to doctors. He doesn't talk, his parents explained. The doctors found nothing wrong. The story goes that Albert didn't speak a word until he was three or four years old. Then, suddenly, over supper one night, he said, The soup is too hot. Greatly relieved, his parents asked why he had never said anything before. Because, little Albert replied, up to now, everything has been fine. Is this story true? There's no proof. Most boys his age played soldier and other rough and tumble games, not Albert. When Albert saw real soldiers marching with their blank faces, they frightened him. Albert preferred to stay by himself and daydream. He enjoyed playing with blocks and building houses out of playing cards. Some of them were 14 stories high. His parents continued to worry about their lonely and quiet son. They took him to more doctors. Could there be something wrong with his brain? his parents asked. Once again, doctors found nothing wrong with the boy. It was just his nature. He was quiet. He was a thinker. Albert's father and uncle had a business that sold batteries, generators, and wire. Electricity fascinated Albert. It was invisible, powerful, and dangerous. Electricity was like some mysterious secret. Albert pestered his father and uncle with lots of questions. How fast is electricity? Is there a way to see it? What's it made of? If there is electricity, could there be other strange and mysterious forces in the universe? Albert enjoyed thinking about a world beyond the one that could be seen or explained. As he later said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Albert was also fascinated by the compass that his father had given him. No matter what he did with the compass, its needle always pointed in the same direction north. Albert turned the compass upside down and sideways. He used it in the dark. No matter what, That needle always pointed in the same direction. Albert wondered why. His dad explained that the Earth is like a big magnet that's always pulling on the compass's magnetic needle. Albert was amazed that some strange and powerful force was all around him. He could not see it or feel it, yet it was there, making the compass needle move. Albert had more to think about. School wasn't teaching him about the things that mattered to him. So, at about age 10, Albert started to teach himself. 
He was going to read as much about science as he could. Albert also enjoyed playing the violin. Music calmed his active mind. He especially liked playing duets with his mother. She would accompany him on the piano. One day, while they were playing, Albert suddenly realized that music chords were like patterns of numbers. Musical rhythms were like counting by threes, fours, or eights. Music's just like numbers, he explained to his mother. Albert was thinking even when relaxing. Later, when Albert was famous and traveled all around the world, he carried only two things with him his suitcase and his violin. When Albert was a year old, his family moved to the city of Munich in Germany. There, his sister Maya was born. Albert expected a little sister to be like a toy, but Maya had no wheels like his other toys. Where are its wheels? he asked his parents, clearly disappointed with the new baby. The wheelless little girl, however, quickly became Albert's best friend. As they grew older, Albert and Maya loved to take long walks and hikes. Often their cousins came with them. The higher the hill, the better Albert could think. On these thinking hikes, he would use his compass and thought more about how mysterious the world was. He would lie on his back in the grass, look at the sky, and think about space. Is there anything farther away than space? How fast would somebody have to go to get there? How does light get all the way from those stars to your eyes? How far does space go on? Could you ride on a beam of light? Is anything bigger than the universe? It was as if Albert had been born to think. His father and uncles helped guide his thinking. His sister and cousins encouraged his thinking hikes. Albert found books to help him think out math and science problems. And his mother introduced him to music, which engaged his mind in a way that books could not. Just as some kids dream of becoming mechanics or veterinarians, Albert was destined to be a thinker. The Magnetic Earth. Magnets have invisible forces. Every magnet has two ends, one called the North Pole and one called the South Pole. The North Pole of any magnet is attracted to the South Pole of any other magnet. Bring opposite poles close to each other and they stick together. But try to bring two like poles together, North and North, or South and South, you can't. The iron inside the Earth creates magnetic forces. The Earth itself has a North Pole end near the North Pole and a South Pole end near the South Pole. A compass's needle is magnetic. One end is attracted to the Earth's North Pole and one to the Earth's South Pole. There is an arrow on the end of the compass needle that always points north. Chapter 2 What's to be done with a genius? Albert liked elementary school. The teachers were kind and patient. They tried their best to answer all of Albert's questions. But things changed when Albert turned 10. That's when he started high school. It was an awful experience. Once, when Albert's father asked the school principal what profession his son should consider, the principal said, It doesn't matter. Albert will never make a success of himself at anything. The German high school was very strict. The students had to wear uniforms. They had to march like soldiers from one class to the next. And soldiers made Albert nervous. In the classrooms, everyone had to sit very straight at all times. Teachers yelled out orders. Students jumped to attention. Questions were not allowed. Albert was expected to read and memorize. He was not expected to think. Albert was stunned. This wasn't his style. Albert called his teachers sergeants because of how they treated the students. Math was his favorite subject because you couldn't just memorize math problems. You had to think them through. 
At home, his uncle made up difficult algebra problems for Albert. Algebra is a math that involves equations, and for Albert, it was like solving a puzzle. Albert was also given a book that he used to teach himself geometry. Geometry is math that involves shapes, squares, cubes, circles, and spheres. And for Albert, it was like playing with blocks. Meanwhile, other boys in his class were still struggling with multiplying and dividing, and Albert was being punished for asking too many questions. Albert never really fit in with the other boys at school. He wasn't interested in sports, and the classes were boring. Albert needed an older brother, someone who had lived through a rough high school experience, to let him know that everything would turn out okay. For Albert, that older brother was Max Tolmy. Max was a medical student and a friend of the family. He often joined the Einsteins for dinner. Max quickly came to understand and appreciate how brilliant the teenage Albert was. He brought Albert lots of books from the local university. Max couldn't really discuss math with Albert. The flight of Albert's mathematical genius, wrote Max, was so high that I could no longer follow. But Max did encourage Albert to explore new interests. Soon Albert was reading about history and studying religion. Albert's family was Jewish, but his parents did not follow many Jewish customs. They had sent Albert to a Roman Catholic elementary school simply because they thought it was the best school available. But for a while, Albert wanted to follow the traditions of the Jewish religion very strictly. For example, he refused to eat pork. Like many people, Albert did not believe the exact words of the Bible, such as passages that said the world had been created in just six days. Did this end Albert's interest in religion? No, it just gave Albert's curious mind even more to think about. Ideas come from God, he claimed. And later in life, Albert often said that his goal as a scientist was to read God's mind. When Albert was 15, his friend Max moved to America. Losing Max was very hard on Albert. Then Albert's family moved from Germany to Italy because of his father's business, leaving Albert behind to finish school. Albert was angry and lonely and hated school more than ever. Albert had never looked up to his teachers. Now he grew openly disrespectful of them. Unthinking respect for authority, he explained, is the greatest enemy of the truth. One of his teachers called him a lazy dog. Others said that he was a bad influence on his classmates because he was always asking questions the teachers could not answer. The end result was that Albert was expelled from school. Chapter 3 Albert Takes a Very Deep Breath and keeps thinking. One is born into a herd of buffaloes and must be glad if one is not trampled underfoot before one's time. Albert Einstein Getting expelled from school, even a school he hated, was very painful for Albert. He was embarrassed to have failed so openly. He was angry with his teachers. He was disappointed in himself. Yet he was also excited that he would soon see his family. Albert joined his parents and sister in northern Italy. Italy was so different from Germany. Albert quickly fell in love with the country. Italians were so friendly, civilized, and open-minded. For the next two years, Albert went to concerts and visited art museums. Best of all, he had time to read and to think. He studied the lives of scientists, including those who had suffered because their thinking had gone against widely held ideas of the time. For example, there was Nicholas Copernicus, 1473-1543, the Polish astronomer. He was severely criticized for stating that the Earth orbited around the Sun and not vice versa. 
A hundred years later, in 1633, Galileo Galilei, an Italian scientist, was arrested for agreeing with Copernicus. Yet in Albert's time, no sane person believed that the sun circles the earth. The study of other scientists' theories pushed Albert's thinking even further. In Italy, he had time to write down those thoughts and answer many of the questions he had been asking himself for years. Now, he was a real scientist. He even had his first scientific paper published in a magazine while he was still a teenager. When scientists have new ideas to share, they write about them in scientific journals. That's what it means to get a paper published. For Albert, as for all scientists, getting papers published was very important. It was the only way other scientists could learn about his ideas and thoughts. Albert's first published paper was about electricity and magnetism. That was no surprise. After all, he'd been thinking about both subjects for years. But to everybody's surprise, Albert began his paper by disagreeing with something that all scientists assumed was true. Scientists claimed that the empty part of outer space, the part without planets and moons, was filled with something called ether. Scientists had no idea what ether was made of or what it looked like, felt like, or smelled like, but they all agreed it was there. Albert disagreed. He claimed that the empty part of space was, well, empty. Albert's first paper did not get a lot of attention. Although Albert was disappointed about that, he should not have been surprised. After all, Albert was a teenager who had been expelled from high school and who was still living with his parents. Who was he to challenge the theories of the world's most respected scientists? However, years later, many of those same scientists would seek out Einstein's first published paper and marvel at the genius of the young scientist. Because Albert was right. While living in Italy, Albert took long walks by himself. Day after day, he hiked in the mountains. His family's business was failing, and Albert worried that he was a drain on his parents, a sponge that took but never gave back. He had lots to think about, and a daily walk and time alone cleared his mind. I lived in solitude in the country and noticed how the monotony of a quiet life stimulates the creative mind, he said. Albert made several important decisions during those hikes. He decided to study physics at college. Physics is the science of objects, their energy, and the way they move. After that, he wanted to become a physics professor. To do this, Albert knew that he would have to finish high school. But no school could ever own his mind, which he felt his German high school had tried to do. Albert also decided that the freedom to think, to explore his own ideas, would always be the most important thing in life. If he got married and had children, his wife and family would matter to him, of course. But they would never matter as much, he realized, as his ability to think freely. To some people, that might sound like a selfish way to live. But for Albert, it was the only kind of life that made any sense. Albert re entered high school in Switzerland, where German was spoken. What a pleasant and unexpected surprise! His new school wasn't like the German high school at all. At the Swiss school, students were supposed to ask questions. Albert especially enjoyed discussing the subject of time with his teachers. How fast does time pass? What is the future? Do we travel into it or is it already here? Will time ever run out? Not only did Albert like his Swiss school, he also liked the Swiss people. They were friendly and fair. Albert decided to become a citizen of Switzerland. After graduating from high school, Albert stayed in Switzerland and began college at Swiss Federal Polytechnic in the city of Zurich. Albert had no money. His family had fallen on hard times. An uncle provided Albert with a little money. But it wasn't much. Albert lived in a dark room, ate barely enough, 
and went without new clothes just so he could stay in school. Still, there were good things about this time. At college, he was making new friends. The other students lovingly would call Albert the professor because he had so many theories and talked so much about physics. One of his new friends was Maliva Marie, the only woman in Albert's class. Albert liked to call her Dolly. She too was a brilliant thinker. They talked endlessly about physics and music. It was not long before Maliva and Albert announced their plans to marry. Without the thought of you, he wrote her in 1900 at the age of 21, I would no longer want to live among this sorry herd of humans. Upon graduation from college in 1900, Albert was all set to become a physics teacher. It should have been a wonderful time in his life. He had his diploma, and he was in love. However, he could not find a teaching job. His uncle stopped sending him money. Albert's clothes were ragged. His meals were few and far between. His health suffered. Without a job, he couldn't afford to marry Maliva. Albert ended up taking a job with the Swiss Patent Office. It wasn't where he wanted to work, but it was a job. Then, Albert's father died. Albert was devastated. Fortunately, he had Maliva. And surprisingly, his job at the Patent Office turned out to be far better than Albert could have ever imagined.